Welcome to Preferred Utilities Technical Seminar on Carbon Reduction Strategies for the Boiler Room. Carbon emission reduction is a high priority for a lot of universities and municipalities that operate central steam and hot water plants. Preferred converted the heating boilers in our factory to renewable fuel in June of 2018. When we studied our fuel bill and our electricity bills and applied some conversions from the EPA website, we found that before we switched to renewable fuel, approximately half of our carbon emissions came from our boilers. The other half was from our electricity consumption. Today, we're going to talk about renewable fuels and how you can greatly reduce the carbon emissions from your heating boilers. In our previous renewable fuels webinar, we went into more depth into the regulatory environment behind the push for carbon reduction. We're not going to repeat this topic, but the previous webinar is on YouTube. Also on the last webinar, we talked about carbon reduction through efficiency improvements, adding variable speed drives to your larger motors, and switching from coal or oil to natural gas. In this webinar, we're going to focus on fuel switching from fossil fuels to renewable fuels. We are not going to discuss landfill gas, digester gas, or solid biomass. Landfill gas and digester gas are great sources of renewable, clean burning biofuel, but they require a lot of resources and real estate most central plants don't have access to. I love this photograph because it shows some sort of farming operation, a biogas lagoon, and three digesters under construction. This gives you an idea of the real estate required for landfill gas or digester gas, which just isn't an option for most central heating plant facilities. We're also not going to talk about solid fuel biomass, and, and for the same reason, it requires a lot of real estate. Solid fuel biomass requires a large pile of biomass to be stored on site. You will also need a boiler capable of burning solid fuels, typically a spreader stoker fired boiler like the one shown in this picture. Detroit Stoker and several other companies can set you up with one of these boilers to suit your needs. The technology is well established, but it, is, it has a really big footprint. And for the sake of discussion in this webinar, we're going to assume most of the facility operators and engineers on this webinar just don't have that kind of real estate to put in a, a large solid fuel biomass plant at their, at their campus. So, Preferred Utilities works with two suppliers of liquid renewable fuels. The advantages of liquid renewable fuels include they can be burned in any fire tube or water tube boiler. They can be burned in your existing boilers. Uh, new burners or controls may or may not be required depending on, on what you have existing. Liquid biofuels can be transported by rail car or truck, and you can likely buy them through your existing fuel supplier. Liquid biofuels have NOx, SOx, and CO emissions similar to number two oil, but 80 to 95% less carbon emissions, so air permitting should be an easy process. Preferred Utilities works with two suppliers of liquid renewable fuels. Ensign manufactures what's called renewable fuel oil. We also work with REG that manufactures biodiesel residual oil. Both of these fuels can be transported by rail or car or by truck to your facility, and this unphotoshopped photo is proof. This internet meme illustrates one of the misconceptions around biomass. So one of the nicknames for renewable fuel oil is liquid trees. And it's not quite accurate. It's more like uh, liquid tree trimmings. And I'll explain. The feedstock for renewable fuel oil comes from either harvest residues or commercial thinnings from a sustainably managed forest. Harvest re residues would most likely either be left in the forest to decompose or burned if not used for RFO. The forester that works with Ensign is required to provide an affidavit that feedstock has met the above criteria and that the feedstock did not originate from environmentally sensitive land or government-owned land. 
and each batch of fuel has a certificate that follows it which details where the feedstock originated. Incense feedstock suppliers are generally larger logging operations because they have the ability to provide the necessary certification for the RFS2 program. So this is a more accurate picture of where the feedstock comes from for incense RFO. You see a densely packed forest on the left and a thinned out forest on the right. Forest managers will tell you the forest on the right will support a greater diversity of wildlife and is less susceptible to a devastating forest fire. The end products of incense biomass process are liquid smoke that's used as an additive in food products, renewable feedstock sold to petroleum refineries, and RFO for steam and hot water plants. By the way, when you burn RFO in your boiler, it does produce a very nice wood smoke aroma that smells a lot like liquid smoke. Because RFO is biogenic, greenhouse gas emissions from RFO are about 88% lower than number two oil and 82% lower than natural gas. It's not 100% carbon reduction because it takes some fossil fuel to make the renewable fuel oil and to transport it to the facility. Preferred utilities can convert virtually any fire tube or water tube boiler to fire RFO. However, RFO is acidic, so everything in contact with it must be made of stainless steel prior to combustion. Once we burn the RFO, uh, it's not acidic anymore, so the carbon steel in your boiler tubes and your economizer and your stack are going to be fine as long as we take our normal precautions to make sure that we don't condense anywhere uh, in the flue. Preferred Utilities has converted fossil fuel fired boilers to RFO firing at Bates College, where we did two of their boilers, at Youngstown Thermal, and for the CNRC in Ontario, Canada. Ensign typically amortizes the cost of the fuel conversion in a five-year fuel contract. Even with the fuel switching costs, the price of RFO is close to the price of natural gas on a BTU basis. Preferred has converted two boilers at Bates College for renewable fuel oil. In the second boiler retrofit, we switched out just the internals of their Cleaver Brooks boiler to burn RFO. The green parts in the above picture on the right is the new preferred burner insert. That's the only thing we really changed on the boiler. Uh, that boiler had already been upgraded to preferred controls uh, a few years ago. As soon as our technicians finish tuning up the new burners, Bates issues a press release touting their success, reducing greenhouse gas emissions at their campus. In fact, after Preferred converted the second boiler at Bates, the university declared their campus to be carbon neutral, which generated a lot of publicity. If you Google Bates College carbon reduction uh, like I did, you're going to find a bunch of stories from a bunch of different news outlets talking about uh, how this college was able to achieve carbon neutrality. Because RFO is acidic, the oil storage tank, the pumps, the piping, and the burner need to be made from stainless steel. The price of RFO is about the same or lower than natural gas. The ideal RFO candidate is a facility that is budgeted for new tanks, pumps, and burners, and will burn enough RFO for a quick payback. Switching gears to REG and bioresidual oil, bioresidual oil is made by a company called Renewable Energy Group. They are the largest producer of biodiesel in the United States. Biodiesel residual oil is a waste product of biodiesel production, ethanol production, and recycled cooking oil. Think of biodiesel residual oil as the number six oil of biodiesel. It has the appearance of dirty french fry oil, but it has actually undergone extensive cleaning to remove impurities such as ash, heavy metals, and water.
Preferred Utility started burning bioresidual oil in our two shop boilers in June of 2018. The burner on the left is a 1950s vintage preferred rotary cup burner designed to fire number six oil. The burner on the right is our state-of-the-art low emissions ranger burner. They are both burning bioresidual oil now. This is the startup data from one of the two boilers. Important things to note include bioresidual oil needs to be heated to 160 to 165 degrees F. If existing burners are using number six or number four oil, they will have a pump and heater set that could be reused. Combustion efficiency is similar to that of number two oil. Excess air uh, ran 15 to 20% throughout the firing rate, which is considered uh, good for a liquid fuel. Stack CO, carbon monoxide, is less than 10, per 10 parts per million. This is considered clean combustion for any fuel. And finally, opacity was zero throughout the boiler load. In fact, these burners were firing number six oil before we changed them out to bioresidual oil. It took no new equipment to set them up to burn bioresidual oil. It only required a retune. So the key results of the uh, bioresidual oil firing in our factory was that the oil needed to be heated to about 162 degrees. We keep it warm to about 100 degrees in our tank to keep it pumpable. And then we use an electric trim heater to bring it up to 162 degrees before it's burned. CO emissions and opacity indicated clean combustion. Excess air levels are comparable to number two oil and the boiler efficiency was the same as number two oil. Preferred's two boilers have been firing bioresidual oil since June 2018 with no unplanned downtime. We actually took both boilers down over the summer and did a thorough internal inspection and found that there was no unusual accumulation of ash or anything else in the furnace or on the tubes. So bioresidual oil can be fired in most existing boilers and burners. It needs to be heated, and it's more expensive than natural gas, but it's less expensive than number two oil. So the ideal candidate for burning bioresidual oil is a facility that already has a pump and heater set. They can reduce their greenhouse gas emissions by up to 80% and spend less for fuel than number two oil. There are a lot of facilities in the Northeast that are still burning number six oil, and are planning to switch to number two oil in the near future, these plants can switch to RFO or bioresidual oil and exceed all existing and proposed carbon emission reduction goals. So how do you switch to renewable fuel? First, you call Preferred and Preferred will send combustion engineers out to evaluate your existing burners and boilers. We're going to see um, whether the plan is to burn RFO or bioresidual oil, whether you're going to need new burners, new pumps, a uh, pump and heater set. We'll estimate the capital cost of any changes to existing equipment. You, the facility, will enter a contract directly with the fuel supplier. And once fuel has been delivered on site, preferred technicians or an authorized contractor will modify the burners and controls as needed. And after your first fuel delivery, a preferred technician will retune your burners on the renewable fuel of your choice. Preferred's technicians will train your operators to burn the new fuel. This includes operation of any new equipment. They'll train your operators to identify what a normal flame appearance looks like and what the flame appearance might change to. Uh, if a situation required um, a technician to come out again. Uh, we will talk to your operators about what to expect in the strainer baskets, and we'll teach them how to maintain the fuel in the main storage tanks. It's important for uh, bioresidual oil that the oil in the tank be kept at at least about 100 degrees. Uh, that way it doesn't, uh, it doesn't form a substance that looks a lot like butter in the tank. So we had a little bit of this occur in our main storage tank. We talked to the people at REG 
and they said to just recirculate a little bit of, of hot fuel back to the tanks occasionally, and that, that keeps the oil warm enough to be pumpable all the time. Preferred can set up secure remote monitoring of your boilers. With the preferred cloud server, facility people or preferred technicians can monitor the status of existing boilers. If a boiler goes down or has an alarm, a notification can be sent by email or text. Onboard diagnostics can help us troubleshoot a problem remotely to get the boiler up and running as quickly as possible. Preferred's cloud server operates on a secure Verizon cellular VPN network. Your data does not flow through your facility's IT network and it never hits the public internet. So stay tuned to David Bond's LinkedIn page for more information on our next webinar. In our next webinar, we'll present the results of several new biofuel projects that are in the works now, and we'll provide an update on the changing regulatory environment for renewable fuels. So that's it for today. Um, I thank you very much for attending this webinar today. We're going to go live now with... Uh, Greg Goslin with Ensign and answer uh, all the questions that have come in during this presentation. Thank you.